and the guy just presses the button. He just does it in spite of the fact that, you know, the your commander-in-chief is right there. He's a complete asshole, but he's right there. Aren't you going to ask him, do you want me to let this guy talk to them? Or And Platt doesn't stop it. He doesn't go over and press the button. He doesn't. He just stands there looking angry and whatever. So uh, Cusack and the, the family and stuff get um, trapped inside this little room. They, they try to get onto one of the arcs um, because, you know, you have to like pay to get on. You know, there's a sort of message there and it's, it's, it's okay. Um, the part that was really, it, it really didn't, um, I didn't feel that it needed to be said when Helmsley is inside of a room and it's clearly way too big for just one person and he literally says, you could fit ten people in here. Duh. We're not, we're not stupid. We can tell how big the fucking room is. So anyway, they're trapped inside this little, this, like, um, space inside the Ark, under the actual part of the Ark. Um, I get the feeling that all of the focus, sort of, on the animals was supposed to say something, mean something. Also, is it just me, or was there, did there only seem to be one of every animal? I didn't see two of any animal. I saw one elephant, one giraffe, one something else, rhino. Not two of any of them. Anyway, the they're um, stuck in there, and at, at a point the the water starts rising, and they're clearly they don't have a lot of room to begin with, and that's actually the most effective of the tension stuff because we can relate to that. We can't relate to these big cities just disappearing into nothing. And how, where Hawaii used to be is now just, you know, lava on the water. We can't relate to that. That doesn't... It... It's too big. It's too too out there. Too epic. We can't relate to it. Especially not the way it's shot. It looks impressive. And the effects are fantastic. No doubt about it. But we can't relate to it. It's... It's too big. Um... But once they're there in these little claustrophobic rooms and the doors start separating them, that actually worked. And he has to, like, get down there and untangle something or other that somehow got... Don't ask me how. But I actually thought... It also really didn't work for me how the, the dude, he, he gets his leg caught between two gears and then he just pulls it out. What? How the fuck would that work? It, they're gears. They press against each other, and his leg is caught in there. I'm sorry, dude. Hope that maybe there's a scalpel nearby. If you could stop the bleeding, that's the only way you're getting out of there. Otherwise, you're gonna be crushed between the fucking things. There's no way you're getting out of there. There's no way you're just yanking your leg out there and just walking off with a minor little flesh wound or whatever that was. Anyway, something gets stuck in there. First I thought it was going to be something we'd actually seen, but it appears to be some bit of metal that doesn't really seem like it related to what went on like 10 minutes earlier. I guess um, they didn't want to... They wanted to avoid the R rating, and that's why it wasn't Gordon's smushed little body that he had to pry out from there. <clears throat> so... You know they it they succeed and it um, and they you know get out of there and oh and uh, earlier there's also you gotta love how there's there are cameras everywhere on these arcs they can see anything that they want to and just. You know, they have cameras down by the, the gears, and they get a good, perfect shot of um, Cusack. Just one time, I'd like to see, you know, something where they try to get a, a good shot, and they actually they have to 
yeah, they sort of did that in the Truman Show, you know, where you can only see him from his back, and there's an angle or two where, you know, his ass is in front of everything else. Because, you know, how would you possibly have cameras everywhere? And they have sensors everywhere. The moment that something goes wrong, the computer zeroes in with these over-the-top graphics and says, this is where the problem is, this is exactly what the problem is. How? They, what, they have sensors on the fucking gears? What, how, how can it just, and, and give such a perfect depiction of, and, um, and in spite of, at, at one point in the movie, they, um, they say that, you know, there's no longer any communication. A little later, someone calls on their cell, and they have no trouble. And it's kind of funny, because it's, it's like one of the first characters that we met, and I actually had to think, who, who is this guy? Oh, right, that from the beginning, okay. And he calls, and he says, eh, it's too late, or some bullshit. And then he just hangs up, and then he hugs his family in slow motion as the, you know, tsunami hits him, and that's it. I don't know why he bothered to call. I don't know why he had to hang up with all that time left. Anyway, um, everything seems to still work largely. It, it doesn't really seem like they have to fight to get stuff to work, um, in spite of all the stuff that's <clears throat> been hit by the disaster and all. So, they, um, um, after, um, saving both of his boys, um, Yuri dies. I, I get the feeling that we were supposed to hate him. I didn't quite. I did I, I wasn't even entirely certain what it was that he did, or what the hell the point was of seeing the boxer, like, you know, he, he noticed Yuri... He knows this Yuri leaving, and then he gets knocked out from the back. I don't know if that was some kind of abandonment. I don't know. Um, so um, near the, so it nears the end. Thankfully, uh, we were told that like almost a month passes or so, um, and before they can get back out. Um, and then there's this odd exchange between Cusack and Pete with Amanda Pete with she says something like where have you been all my life and I guess that's supposed to like mean oh she hasn't seen him for a while you know in that month and he responds in the gift shop I is that supposed to mean is 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 that about the, the materialism? They even put a gift shop on the, the Ark in spite of the... What, you can still get souvenirs? And that, you know, that's a point on the commercialism and materialism. I don't... I don't know. Anyway, it's... Overall, it's entertaining enough. It's, um... It's at times exciting. It's not the stupidest, though it is pretty stupid, of new disaster flicks. Um, it it has its moments. It has it. There there are poignant moments, and there are you know some some good to it. Um, if you want to watch a good disaster movie, go back to before um, effects became. Back when the effects were maybe sort of... You can maybe tell how they did the effects, but you actually got to care about the characters. I'd, I'd have to say... I, I haven't watched an awful lot, but I'd have to say... Um, the Poseidon Adventure would have to be my... that That's um, uh, what I'd have to say the best uh, disaster movie I've ever seen. Um... I'd, I'd go for that one, um, if you want to watch a good disaster movie. If you just want to watch the world end and see really good effects and stuff, go ahead and watch 2012.